Hey there, and welcome back as we wrap up our tour of the Seven Wonders of the Ancient World. Every wonder up to this point has offered us some kind of archaeological evidence, or it's still standing like the Pyramid of Giza. Today's wonder, not so much. The Hanging Gardens of Babylon are a mystery to us. There's no archaeological proof to go off of, and the handful of writings that we do have all conflict each other in different ways. There's one man that his writings are more credible than the others, but even that's been brought into question recently. We can't even agree on what it looked like, or where it even was located. The writings we do have talking about the Hanging Gardens come from sources like Herodotus, Xenophon, and Diodius, and they all have discrepancies between how they describe the Hanging Gardens, or if they describe them at all. The most reliable writings we have about the gardens come from a guy named Barassus. He lived in Babylon during the time of Anicus I. Barassus lived sometime around 290 BCE. We don't know when he was born or when he died. We only know what time he wrote books. He writes about a great garden that was constructed by Nebuchadnezzar II, and how it was still flourishing during his time. He says that Nebuchadnezzar had the gardens constructed for his wife from Media. She missed her homeland so much that he had the gardens built to resemble the mountains and the trees from her homeland. Before we talk about the issues with Barassus and his writings, let's look at the other people first. Herodotus failed to mention the gardens altogether when he talked about Babylon. He mentions everything else in the city with amazing detail, but never a mention of the gardens. Now before you discount his writings, when he visited Egypt, he failed to even mention the Sphinx, and this might be because he was just too lazy to walk around the pyramid, or maybe he just didn't like cat people. The other writings from people like Diodorus, Strabo, and Philo of Byzantium all have discrepancies when talking about the irrigation system for the gardens. With Diodorus' description being so vague and saying that you couldn't see how the mechanisms worked from the outside. If Brassus' writings are so accurate, why should we question him? Well, for starters, he says that the Euphrates River was used to take and irrigate the gardens. There's only one real issue with this. The river was either diverted by the Persians in 539 BCE when they conquered the city, or when Xerxes conquered the city in 482. So let's say for the sake of the gardens that each writer only wrote about what stood out to them, about the city and the gardens themselves. So we can call it a day, correct? Well, unfortunately, no. The writings aren't the only holdup that we still have. We still don't have any archaeological proof from Babylon, and archaeological digs have been going on there for a long time. But recently, Dr. Stephanie Daly has put forth a new theory, saying that they weren't located in Babylon at all. They were actually located in another ancient city called Nineveh. Nineveh was originally called Ninya, and is located in modern-day Mosul, Iraq. It was first settled sometime around 6000 BCE, and quickly became known as a trade center and a place of worship. But sometime around 1813 BCE, they found themselves under the new rule of the Assyrian Empire. The Assyrian Empire can be broken up into three main time periods. It's the Old Kingdom, the Middle Empire, and the Neo-Assyrian Empire. It's this final time period that we're actually interested in when it comes to the Hanging Gardens. The Neo-Assyrian Empire started sometime around 912 BCE and lasted to 612 BCE. And during this time period, Nineveh really started to hit its stride under the rule of King Sennacherib I. Sennacherib started his rule sometime around 705 or 704 BCE and lasted all the way until 681 BCE. During his rule, he moved his capital to Nineveh and started new building projects. The Hanging Gardens might have actually been one of these projects. Stephanie actually gives several reasons as to why it was located in Nineveh and not Babylon. For starters, the lack of documentation from Babylon itself. Another reason that she gives is that Nebuchadnezzar's name was actually used as kind of a boogeyman in early Jewish writings. He was said to have taken part in the campaigns against Hezekiah in 701 BCE, and then just about 100 years later in 598 BCE, he was said to have taken part in the campaigns against Jehoiakim. The most compelling argument that we have against the gardens being located in Babylon actually come from Nebuchadnezzar's reign. During his reign, they recorded every little detail. All of the city street names are recorded, and there's never a single mention of the irrigation system like that described from Strabo and all those others. So let's say the gardens were located in either Babylon or Nineveh. What did they look like? That is the problem. We still don't know. There's two theories. The first being that they were actually built into the palace walls for Nebuchadnezzar. The second being that they were built into the terraces of a thing called a ziggurat. Ziggurats were large step temples that were very popular between 2200 to 500 BCE, but they weren't temples that you could worship inside of because they had no interior rooms. The interior of the ziggurat was made of mud brick and the exterior was made of baked brick. They tended to have either squared or rectangular bases. The squared bases were about 50 meters squared, and the rectangulars were about 40 by 50 meters. And just how tall were they? That's the million dollar question. To this day, we've only ever found 25 surviving ziggurats, but they're not all fully intact. The best preserved one we have is from the ancient city of Ur in Iraq. But the largest one we found comes from a place called Chogazambil in Iran. The base of the ziggurat is 102 meters squared, with a height of about 24 meters, 
and it's thought that this height of 24 meters is only half of what it originally was. So how were the gardens destroyed? We really don't know. Some say it was an earthquake, others say it was a war, some say time itself did the job. It's just another mystery for the gardens. The hanging gardens are like a frustrating puzzle that you got from the charity shop. You got it home, you're excited to start putting it together, and you find that not all the pieces are there. So you spend the rest of your life searching charity shops, hoping to find the rest of your puzzle. Maybe one day you're going to be able to complete it, maybe not. No matter what the gardens look like or where they were located, they've still managed to captivate us all these years later. Maybe one day we'll find the missing text or we'll find the archaeological proof that it actually existed. But until that day, we could take and talk about it and fantasize about what it actually looked like. I want to thank you all for watching and I want to thank the patrons. With their support, I'm able to produce these videos. And maybe one day you'll be that archaeologist that manages to find proof of the hanging gardens themselves.